Now, in everyday life, we use only about one-eighth of the capacity of the lungs to breathe with. In other words, we don't really need any more than that unless we exert ourselves by running or exercising or whatever. All we need is enough oxygen in the bloodstream to reach the vital organs of our body to keep ourselves alive. This type of breathing is known as clavicular or chest breathing. This type of breathing is no good whatsoever in the act of singing because it does not allow you to take enough breath into the lungs to sustain a singing sound over a lengthy period of time. And yet you will see singers using this type of breathing. You will see the shoulders go up and the chest go up. And as soon as you notice the chest and the shoulders go, go up, you can rest assured that that singer is using shallow breathing. Now singing requires that the sound be extended or sustained over a lengthy period of time. We can't do it with this shallow breathing because it doesn't allow us to take enough breath into the lungs to sustain the sound over a lengthy period of time. So we have to find a method of breathing that will allow us to fill up the lungs completely before we start to sing, enabling us to sustain the sound over that lengthy period of time. So in order to do that, we use what is known as diaphragmatic breathing. Okay? Now I'm going to explain or, or describe the uh, diaphragm to you so you'll know wh what it looks like and how it affects your breathing when you use it in singing. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle located under the lungs and it's attached to your ribs at the side and your backbone and it's dome-shaped like that. Now when you use your diaphragm, the dome-shaped part or top of the diaphragm drops or lowers downward, enlarging the chest cavity. Now in an effort to fill up that enlarged chest cavity, your lungs expand as you inhale to try to, ex to uh, uh, fill up that enlarged chest cavity. In other words, as your diaphragm goes downwards into its lowered position, it causes the breath that you are inhaling into your body or into your lungs to fill up the three lobes of the lungs right to the bottom. In other words, you have a complete full lung of air. Okay? Now, as the diaphragm, as you expend the, the, the breath in singing or you breathe out, the diaphragm rises back up into its normal domed position, ready to take another breath should you need one. And as the diaphragm rises back up into its normal domed position, it forces or pushes the breath out of the lungs. So the diaphragm in dropping downwards causes the breath to be sucked into the lungs. As the diaphragm rises back up again, it causes the breath to be forced out of the lungs. Now the physical experience you will have when you use your diaphragm in singing will be that instead of feeling that the breath has gone into your lungs, which is where it has gone, it can't go anywhere else, instead of feeling as if it has gone into your lungs, it will feel or you will have the physical sensation that the breath has gone down under your lungs into your upper abdomen. Because you're going to feel an expansion of the body in the area of the upper abdomen outwards like this. Now I think you can notice that when I breathed in using my diaphragm, my, I'll turn sideways, my diaphragm went out like this. It expanded. Now the reason why the body expanded outwards is that as the diaphragm goes from its uh, uh, domed position downwards like this, it flattens out like a plate or a disc, pushing the organs of the lower half of your body outwards giving you the impression that the breath has gone down into your upper abdomen. It hasn't, remember. It has gone into your lungs. But it feels as if it has gone into your upper abdomen because you feel the expansion in an area about 16 inches wide from your breastbone downwards. Okay? Now I can get this same physical expansion of my body by pushing my stomach muscles out. I can breathe in and go like that. But I'm only kidding myself. I haven't used my diaphragm. Now the indication that you're using your diaphragm correctly will be that as you expand the body using the diaphragm, 
you should be able to push your body in and it should pop right back out again like a taut elastic band. Okay. Now I'll illustra illustrate by taking a breath using my diaphragm and then I'll push. See that? I push in and it pops right back out again. Okay. Now if I stick my stomach muscles out, I can't push in. In other words, when you push your stomach muscles out, you have a stiffness. When you use your diaphragm, you have a tautness. There's a difference between tautness and stiffness. Stiffness is rigid. Tautness has an elasticity to it. Okay. Now, when you notice when I used my diaphragm that I didn't raise my shoulders or my chest. In other words, there was no indication of going like that. See? Okay. I have no sensation whatsoever that the breath has gone into my lungs, which is where it has gone. I don't have any indication or feeling or sensation that the breath has gone into my lungs at all. I have the feeling or sensation that the breath has gone into my upper abdomen, as if I had a large balloon or an inner tube down there, and I am filling up the uh, inner tube or the balloon with the breath I'm taking into my body. Okay? So you will not feel the breath going into your lungs. It will seem as if the breath has gone into your upper abdomen. Now when we sing, we are involved with what is known as the registers of the voice. All that means is high notes, middle notes, and low notes. Okay? Now the high notes are where all the problems start with singers. Uh, the high notes require uh, a more tense uh, uh, tension, we'll say, of the vocal cords, more breath pressure, and the natural tendency with high notes is to push or force the high notes. Uh, now, in order to get the vocal cords to vibrate faster, by the way, the vocal cords only produce the, tent the, the pitch of the note. In order to get the vocal cords to vibrate faster to produce those high pitch sounds, more breath has to pass through the vocal cords. And we have to use a set of muscles along with the diaphragm in order to get that extra breath through the vocal cords to create the high notes effortlessly, known as the intercostal muscles. The intercostal muscles are situated between each rib. Now these intercostal muscles and the diaphragm produce what we call support for the breath. Now to give you an illustration, I will pretend I'm going to yell several times. I'll put my hand on my upper abdomen and I'll yell. I'll take a breath first of all using my diaphragm. Then I'll yell a couple of times and you will notice something physical happening down here where my, where my hands are. Watch this. I'll turn sideways like this. I take a breath using my diaphragm. Now I'm going to yell hey a couple of times. Now watch what happens down here. Hey! Hey! See it pull in? No, I didn't physically pull it in like that. When I yelled hey, the breath was, ex was exploded from my lungs and it went into my head and I created the sound hey. In other words, the diaphragm came up very quickly to push the breath through my vocal cords. Okay? The diaphragm rose quickly, the intercostal muscle pulled in and that breath was forced through my vocal cords and I yelled hey. Now when you sing, you don't explode sound, you sustain sound. So you're not going to feel that violent physical reaction in the center of your body uh, when you sing because you're sustaining sound rather than exploding sound. Okay? Now this part of the body, as I mentioned before, is the power source down here. Okay? And this part of the body uh, is, the, is the physical part of the act of singing. There's one other physical thing, which I will explain in the next lesson, uh, but the physical part of the act of singing is basically down under your rib cage, because if we use the physical part of the singing down here, we free the head area, and that's what we want to have happen.